fantastic. Hi flower friends, Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, growing cut flowers and vegetables in upstate New York, zone four. B. Okay, so today's video is all about the vegetables that I plan on growing this year. Some of these are old seeds, some of these are new seeds. The first thing I want to do is show you my new seeds that just arrived. These are from Baker Creek. Now, Baker Creek has seen five times the number of orders that they normally see at this time of year. So they've been having to shut down their website and turn back on uh, just so they could keep up with the orders. So let me show you what I got from Baker Creek just the other day. So here's the package, which actually it's a little bit different than the package that Baker Creek normally sends. Usually it, it looks like a big giant seed packet with fun things all over it. Okay, so John, um, Baker Creek actually has uh, this I think you buy four and they give you one free. So, so you get a free seed packet with every order usually. So some of these are flowers. You can hear them. Oh, there's seeds. Some of these are flowers. Some of these are vegetables. So let me go through the flowers first. The first flower that I have to show you, it's so exciting, is nasturtium. Now nasturtium is a flower that I've been growing for years. This is a trailing vine nasturtium. I grew this exact same variety last year. Uh, I put them around my vegetables because they are bait for other bugs. The flea beetles in particular are attracted to the nasturtium so that keeps the flea beetles off all of my other things. I have a huge flea beetle issue. It's actually one of the worst cases I've ever seen in this property. So nasturtium is important for that, but it's also great for cuts and it's also edible. So you can put this in salads. It has like a radish flavor to it. So I really love it. It also comes in several unique varieties. This is a mix, but there are some really beautiful varieties that you can get in nasturtium. For the first time this year, I'm planting hollyhock on the property. And uh, the first one that I'm going with is a black hollyhock. I keep visioning this small section of my garden that is all black flowers, and this is definitely going to be the beginning of this section, so uh, fingers crossed for this hollyhock. I actually have another hollyhock in here. It's called Margarette Double Champagne. Uh, I'm just super attracted to this color this season, so yay. This next one is a flower that I've been trying to get my hands on for a couple of years, and they're always sold out, and that is a dandelion, but it's pink. Look how fresh. Look at that, a pink dandelion. That's been sold out. I, th it's, I think it was introduced a few years ago and I have not been able to get my hands on it until now, so yes. Here we have an amaranth. This is the Dreadlocks amaranth. I love their seed packets, they're so fun. So this guy's wearing it <laughs> as, as Dreadlocks because that's the name of this amaranth variety. I've never grown this. I've seen other people growing it. Um, not everyone loves it, but um, I'm trying it out this year. I, I have, I think, all of the amaranths I'm trying out. Okay, that's not a flower, but it's used for cuts though. Okay, so I'll talk about it anyway. This is something that was recommended to me, to me because I grow a lot of basil and someone said, you gotta grow lime, the smell is out of this world. So this is a lime basil that I'm growing for filler and uh, I'm excited to smell it because a, any basil is gonna smell delicious, but lime basil is gonna have that interesting zest of the lime, so I'm excited about that. This next one is Kilimanjaro White Marigold. I love the white marigold. So last year I grew mostly orange marigolds, but there was one plant in the sea of marigolds that had one white bloom, and I was like, ooh, I like that. So I'm trying out these white marigolds this year from Baker Creek. Here is that dahlia seed mix that I have spoken about in the past in a video about my dahlias. This is the Unwinds mix. I've been hearing some mixed feedback on growing dahlias from seeds. Some people say that the flowers don't last that long for them in the vase. Other people say that their dahlias from seed lasted longer than their dahlias from tubers in the vase. So we'll just have to see how they do for me and I'll let you guys know. Ooh, I was excited about this one. This is hens and chick poppies. Check this out. So cool. It looks like just a unique center and then the poppy itself is gorgeous. But once the poppy drops its petals, then you're left with this super awesome textury thing in the middle and that's what I'll be using in arrangements. Hens and chicks poppy. I think this was new this year for Baker Creek. I'm excited about it. Let me see if there are any other flop. Oh, yes. Okay, so I cannot count accurately the number of times I was tagged in a photo that was going around on social media 
mostly Facebook, and it looked like a white sunflower with a blue center, and that's what people thought it was. Turns out it was an African daisy, and I saw this on the Baker Creek website. I said, yep, gotta get it. So this is that flower that everyone was sharing, saying, look at this cool sunflower. It's actually an African daisy, and I was so excited to see it on their, their listing this year, so I had to pick that up. So thank you everyone for tagging me in this. I'm gonna try and grow it this year. Okay, anything else in the family of flowers? Nope, okay, so let's get to the vegetables. So I have some herbs that I'm gonna be growing. The new herb that I'm trying this year is a moss, curl, moss curled parsley. Very excited, I have a ton of herbs that I will be starting and I actually do herbs as part of my seedling sale in May. So in another few weeks, I'll be starting a lot of things for my seedling sale because I like to have the plants um, a little bit on the bigger side. I don't do six pack sales, I do individual pot sales. So I like my herbs and my tomatoes and my peppers to be a little bit on the bigger side because uh, that's what people are expecting when they're buying individual pots. Here's a fun cabbage. I uh, really like the look of this one. It's just got really purple veins. It's called Villaggio di Verona, and uh, it looks great. It's a vintage heirloom cabbage originating in Northern Italy. I like it. Okay, so the next one I did grow. La nope, didn't grow it. Lying, that's a lie. I bought it last year. I gave my girlfriend Lisa some seeds. She grew it, and she gave me some of the beans, and they were delicious. So. <laughs> I have leftovers from last year that I ended up just not getting into the ground, and I have a new packet because they were delicious. She grew them, she lives around the corner from me, and she gave me a whole bag full of them, and I ate them in like 10 minutes for dinner. They were delicious, just raw right out of the bag. So the dragon tongue beans, super delicious. I did not cook them, but I think they're probably delicious cooked as well. They're a long flat bean. Okay, so this is new to me this year. This is a melon called Tigger. And it's from, it's Armenian, and it is a vibrant fire red with zigzag stripes, super excited about it. Apparently it's amazingly fragrant, and in dry conditions it produces a super sweet fruit. I had such great luck with the Kajari melon last year that I said, why not give this a try? I'm a cucumber girl. I will eat cucumbers out of the garden all day long. I've actually eaten cucumbers on my videos before. This is the Mexican sour jerkin. Clearly, there's no picture of it, but um, it's those little cucamelons, those really cute ones that you, you like to eat. I've actually never successfully grown this. I've tried three or four years in a row. I always get great vines and I end up with little flowers. I don't know if there's a pollination issue or what, but I can't give up on them because I love them so much. They do have a fairly low germination rate, so they overpack all of these packets for you. I'm, a, I'm just a huge fan of kale, and this is a really cool Russian red or ragged jack, and I didn't even buy it. This was my free seed, so thank you. Here's another cucumber. This one's called Muncher. Like I said, I will eat cucumbers all day long. I make, I make a ton of cucumber salads in the summertime. We also just cut up cucumbers and put them on plates, and that's part of our dinner. It's like a side dish. Almost every day in the summer, I grow that many cucumbers. Last year, I think I had 40 or 50 plants and we just snacked on cucumbers all the time. So these were fantastico. Okay, now we're getting to the tomato section. It's quite large, so bear with me. I'm a huge tomato person as well. If you don't know, one of my favorite things is a tomato sandwich. And a tomato sandwich is a freshly sliced tomato, sun ripened and still warm on toasted white or Italian bread with a slab of mayonnaise and salt and pepper. <sighs> That's it. You don't add anything else. You don't add cheese. You don't add lettuce. You don't add anything. It's simply a freshly sliced tomato, toasted bread, mayonnaise. If you don't like mayonnaise, it still tastes good. It's a little bit of salt and pepper. It's fantastic. Okay, so here are the new varieties of, and this is a little bit deceiving because three of these are the same packet. <laughs> so I purchased Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. Really excited about trying these. I have not done these before. The description on the back is as follows. Mind-boggling, humongous clusters of 40 to 60 fruit in one cluster. Amazing. Beaked yellow cherries. I like that description. I've never heard of a tomato described as beaked, but you can see in the picture, they kind of come to a beak. Oh, I dropped the package. Okay, so the next thing I have on my list is mortgage lifter. These are huge one pound pink fruits with delicious sweet taste 
produces like mad. Ooh, okay. We have Cherokee Purple. I'm a huge fan of the dark colored tomatoes. They are so beautiful. I grew a few of them this last year. I'll get to those in a minute because I'm going to go over all my old seeds too. And then these are seeds that I've also been dying to get my hands on. This is three packets of the San Marzano tomato. This is uh, the number one tomato in Italy for making sauce, drop it seeds. And I purchased three of them because there's only 25 seeds in a packet. And if I'm gonna sell these at a seedling sale, I wanted to do like 25 for personal use. I know my mom wants some, and then I was gonna sell some as well. So last year I started about 400 tomatoes to sell in the seedling sale. I sold about 300 of them. And uh, so I planted. <laughs> 100 tomato plants in my garden last year and we had an amazing season. Let me get the rest of the tomatoes and I can go over those right now. Okay, so the rest of my tomatoes, I have the, the climbing triple crop. It's a nondescript package. I have two of them. Uh, there's probably 20 seeds or something in each of these. And so the, the climbing triple crop, I probably had 20 of these plants in the ground last year. Holy guacamole, they just kept producing. Up, I, I had them on a, a cattle panel trellis and they just kept going up and up and up and up and up and the fruits on them were fantastic. I have a bunch of pictures. So these are super sweet cherry tomatoes. Again, amazing flavor. These were the best cherry tomatoes that I grew this year and I grew quite a few. I adored these. These also kept producing for me, fantastic. These are the blush artisan tomatoes. Those did well. Japanese black trifel. I actually, for some reason, didn't plant any of these last year. Um, I, I don't know if I, the seed packet was like down in the box and I didn't see it. So I have, I have 250 seeds of these to plant this year. So we have Roma tomatoes. These are called Principe Borghese and they are a grape, like one to two ounce size. Like, so they're bigger than a cherry tomato and smaller than a plum. They're really adorable. This was amazing. This is the Abe Lincoln tomato. Um, I can't remember exactly the size, but I gave my mom a bunch of these plants and she grew a huge tomato. She sent me the picture. She weighed it. So I'll, I'll put it on the screen here. Massive. It beat my biggest tomato of the season by at least like eight ounces or something. And it was from, you know, my plant. So I kind of felt a little bit of a claim to fame with it, but uh, super excited about the Abe Lincolns. And I know I have more seeds left in here. Ugh. Oh yeah, I've got at least 50 seeds left in here, so that's exciting. All right, we got more. Oh, the Amish paste tomatoes, those are really great for making, for canning. Ox heart pink, these were delicious too. We got another one here from this. Oh, the small red cherry, they did really well as well. They were like, like really small red cherry. You have the super sweet, which is like the size of a quarter, and then the small red cherry were like nickel size, but they were still delicious. This is another heirloom tomato called Rose. This was really good. And then here are the black crims. I really like the way these tasted too. They had a little bit more of a meatier flesh um, uh, and they were really good in my tomato sandwiches. It says yellow pear and I planted it and I sold it as yellow pear because that's what the package says. This was a free seed packet um, from Baker Creek last year. It's actually not yellow pear. It was a small red tomato. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but it was delicious. So I actually didn't have any yellow pear. So I know this year that when I plant yellow pear, it's not yellow pear. It's definitely a small, really deeply grooved red tomato. It was my mom's favorite because I gave her two of these plants too. Uh, delicious. So many. Oh, what the? Okay, so much more guys, so much more. We've got peanuts. I grew peanuts a couple years ago. I didn't try any last year. Uh, leeks, purple basil, celery, bullnose peppers, radicchio, little gem lettuce. I do have another packet of the cucamelons, merlot lettuce, lots of lettuces, scarlet lettuce, savoy cabbage, lots of lettuces. Uh, this, this Easter basket radish packet really did well, really did well. I got all different colors of radishes. And my husband, like one of Brad Pitt's favorite things, like if he had radishes every day for a snack, he'd be happy. Watermelons, Hilton cabbage. Oh, here's a purple Russian tomato. Didn't even know I had this. This was a free seed packet from last year. 
Guess I'll try that this year too, put it down with the tomatoes. Okay, so the cabbage, this is the Hilton Head cabbage. Oh my gosh, I grew this a couple years ago. I had massively sized heads of cabbage. I'll put a picture on the screen of, of me and my cabbage. It was so much bigger than my head, it was delicious. And my aunt has a recipe for a salad that she makes out of this using ramen noodles like the ramen noodles from the ramen noodle soup, but you know, don't cook them. They're like crunchy. Oh, it's the best. She uses like an Asian sauce and uh, cabbage and these, oh, and sliced almonds. Oh, it's so good. Early wonder beets. My beets did so good this year. So this year with my beets, I did the multi-sew method that Charles Dowding did. I started them indoors in 72 plug trays. I, I put three or four seeds in each 72 plug space and I did not thin them. I did not thin them. I let them grow together. And Charles Dowding has this thought, and it's clearly correct, because it works for him every year, that they don't crowd each other out, they use each other to grow. And as they grow, they push each other out of the way, but they all grow. And then you go check on them, you pull out the biggest beet in that little multi sown area, and then the other three beets will continue to grow bigger and then you go back and get the next biggest beet and then the final two will grow bigger. So basically it's quadrupling your production in the same space. Check out his videos, he knows what he's talking about. So, beets are my favorite. They're my, I, I love beets. I don't care if they smell and taste like dirt, I love them. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, okay. One of my favorite things to eat on this green earth are fresh peas from the garden, sugar snap. Snow peas, yeah, I'll eat the whole pot. But sugar snap, that's my jam. Talked about this before. So I grow multiple varieties, I'm like dropping my seeds, multiple varieties of sugar snap peas. For some reason, let me know if this pertains to you as well. My bitterness flavor is high. Like I can taste something that's bitter, even if it's only slightly bitter, and it makes me sick. So for some reason, the King Top purple peas that I grew a ton of last year tasted very bitter to me. I couldn't eat them. But then Brad Pitt would eat some or my friend Lisa came over, she was in the garden, she tasted them. Neither one of them thought they were bitter at all. Same thing with my lettuce. I feel like every time I grow lettuce, it tastes bitter. I don't like it, I spit it out. Uh, but for some reason, they don't taste the bitterness. So I Googled it, turns out I just have a very sophisticated palate. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, so apparently I can just taste the bitterness in things where other people can't. So let me know if you're like that. If you taste something and you're like, oh God, it's bitter. Usually it's lettuce with me, um, especially organic lettuce. I don't know why, I don't know what they do, but if I buy my organic lettuce, romaine lettuce from the store, nine times out of 10, it tastes bitter to me. So I'm like giving up on buying lettuce. Maybe I should, maybe I should grow lettuce all year round. Good idea. I'll give this to Lisa. Lisa, this is coming to you. But I do like the Calvadon Wonder Peas. The Lincoln Peas. Hold on, I've got more. Oh God, ah! Favorite, okay, my favorite. The Tall Telephone Peas. These I was introduced to by Charles Dowding, shocking. So Charles Dowding grows them, but his are called Alderman Peas. And I was fascinated with that because I live in the hamlet of Alder Creek inside the town of Boonville. So I was like, Alderman Peas? I live in Alder Creek. There is a creek running through my backyard. It's Alder Creek. So I wanted to grow Alder Peas. Over here, they're called Tall Telephone Peas. They are the same variety. So this popular garden variety was introduced in 1881. Reading the back of the seed packet. The reason that Charles Dowding grows these is because they grow like eight to 10 feet tall and he has these massive vining areas for his peas to grow up and they will continue to grow. They just go crazy. And the pea pods on this are like twice as long as a regular sugar snap pea. So you're getting more peas per pod they were delicious. I couldn't even stop eating them. Usually I have enough peas to like bring them in the house and freeze some. Yeah, it didn't happen. I ate them all. Ate them all and I do several different methods of growing peas. I make a little um, teepee out of uh, bamboo stakes. I also use some chicken wire, make a little arch and arbor up peas around that. Um, this year I think I'm gonna do uh, the 
the cattle panel arch, the arbor like that. I grow, I grew Kajari melons and red noodle beans on that last year, but I have, I have probably have like 10 cattle panels to use. So I, I'll probably <laughs> do a couple of more of those arbors and uh, definitely grow some tall telephone peas. I think they'll go all the way around and touch the bottom on the other side. We'll see. And peas, I start early. I start peas about six weeks before my last frost. March, middle of March. I have more varieties of peas too. Everything's just kind of in here. This year I'm, I'm growing uh, miniature white cucumbers. And the watermelon that I'm growing is called Blacktail Mountain Watermelon. And this is a 60 day variety. So I'm excited about that because my season is so short. I don't really have enough time to get those major, massive 130, 140 day watermelons. So this I was super attracted to. 12 pound fruit in just 60 days. Can't beat that. I try to grow eggplant and every year I massively fail. And I believe it has to do with my flea beetles. Here is one of the varieties, Oswald, Oswald, Oswald. So every year I try and every year I fail. I do, last year I did get little baby fruit. They look like peas. I got no big fruit. So I'll probably once again try to grow a plant and massively fail at it. I really do believe the flea beetles um, just, they get it, they get it. I buy the massive <laughs> things of beans because I grow a lot of beans. I do four or five succession plantings of beans because I can them. I love to can my beans. And uh, when I say four or five succession plantings, yes, I do about 100 plants a time. Um, that way it gives me several times to harvest and can and I'll do however many jars at a time because I don't really have time to do a whole weekend worth of canning, especially with the flowers. So, and I used to try to grow corn. I epically fail at growing corn. Uh, I wasn't growing enough the first couple of years for pollination. So I would have corn with like three kernels on it. it wasn't cute. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> it's like missing teeth. And uh, so I decided to stop trying to grow corn. And now I buy corn from a local person who grows corn, who has a you pick corn. So I'll go down and I'll, I'll pick a bushel of corn, bring it home and then I'll can it. I usually make corn relish. Corn relish is oh, the best. Corn relish is amazing with like tortilla chips on hot dogs. Uh, everything. Corn relish is the bomb. So that's what I do for my beans though is succession plant them and then I will can them. I grow a ton of winter squash including blue hubbard. Love that. I've got spaghetti squash. I have buttercup squash. I have honey baby squash. Honey babies last year. I got so many honey babies. Um, then I bought a packlet, palilla, packet of summer squash medley which has a whole bunch of different summer squashes and this year I was able to grow like a the patty pan, the white patty pan, regular zucchini, yellow squash. Uh, what else did I have in that little one? Just good stuff. Medley. More cucumbers. I have a Boston pickling cucumber, early fortune cucumber. This is a 55 day cucumber, which is fantastic. Here's that Kajari melon. So uh, this I was introduced to from Jess from Roots and Refuge and uh, super intrigued. So I grew it for the first time last year. So productive. I had 40 fruits. I'm telling you, 40 fruits from just a couple of plants. And I did it up the arbor and they were fantastic. I did notice though, towards the end of my season, the mouse, the mice found them. <laughs> so uh, they were definitely a favorite of the critters. This is a green apple cucumber. It's a snacking cucumber and it looks like a green apple and it's uh, more round than it is long. Uh, super good. Really, really liked it. Super productive. I probably got 12 or 14 cucumbers off of each vine. I just love to eat them right in the garden. Cantaloupe, never really successfully grow that either. Spinach, it always goes to seed on me, just being honest. I try. Ooh. I was telling Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass that I can never grow carrots. Her carrots always look so long and beautiful and wonderful and, and mine come out looking like they've got three broken legs. Hmm. Try again. Ooh, the early Russian cucumber. I think this is the one that's 55 days, the early Russian. Don't quote me. Just going from memory here. But yeah, marigold. I don't know how that got in here. I grow a lot of marigolds because I put them all over my vegetable garden. Burgundy okra. I grew this last year for the first time. I got one or two okra, but nothing really harvestable. 
another carrot. I tried getting the fat ones. So I thought maybe the uh, shorter, fatter carrots that didn't have to go as deep into my soil might be better. Anyway, that's kind of a summary of the vegetables that I'm uh, gonna be growing this year. I'm also gonna be growing a lot of pumpkins. I just have not purchased those seeds yet. Also, my cousin, a couple doors down, is gonna be growing some pumpkins. Uh, we might be able to like, sell them on the um, bouquet bar and stuff like that too. I'm hoping to have like a wagon of pumpkins out there for people. Um, not so much the orange ones, but the decorative pumpkins and maybe some gourds and stuff like that. He grew last year the birdhouse uh, gourds and those were really pretty. So I know I touched upon the fact that I'm having a seedling sale, uh, but I, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. I'll talk about that again in a couple of weeks when I have all of my stuff and I'm getting ready to start those vegetable seeds and those herb seeds for the seedling sale because that has, there, there's a lot of details I wanna talk about in that, including whether or not you need a license and stuff like that, which it varies state by state. Um, but I will tell you that here in New York State, I do need to have a license to sell any potted plant. Not for a cut flower, for a potted plant. So in order for me to sell a seedling, it is a requirement that I have a license. So I'll talk about all those details and, and what I use uh, for all of that and what I plan to sell this year. So that'd be fantastic. I'll also talk about where I'm gonna be putting all these vegetables because some do need to go inside the deer fence. I'm torn about like what's gonna go where. I already do have blueberry, blueberries and raspberry patch. I think I could fit stuff in between. It's, a, it's all about using all of the square footage that I have. Um, I need to sit down and make those plans. I'm gonna go do that right now. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you soon. What the heck are you doing? I'm making a picture.